Kapawa Hospital actually started in 1973 uh, by Max and Jean Starr, which is back, basically what I call a backyard operation because they worked from their house and from their garage. Now the concern there was of course the welfare of the koala. Back then it was chlamydia as it is now. So they didn't know much about it and Jean was very, very stoic and very, very determined to find out about this disease. Contacted the Australian Museum, the universities of uh, Queensland and Sydney and filtered through a lot of information. And that bit by bit she started filtering through to her helpers and um, John Williamson got involved, which is the Australian singer, and composed the song Goodbye Blinky Bill. So with that song, we managed to build the ICU that you can see behind us. And the main aim of the Koala Hospital, back from 1973, till today and in the future, is to rescue, rehabilitate, and release koalas. When you guys rehabilitate them ready for the release, do you try to release them near the locality they were picked up or do you do targeted releases in certain areas where you know they're going to do well and flourish or how does that work? The ones here in Port need to go back to the actual street where they were, where they actually come from, which, because it's all got to do with home ranges. Koalas, which like from Breeza, Gunnada, need to go back to those places. If people say own a block of land and they're interested in caring for their local koala populations, yep. is it worth them doing a bit of research into what particular feed species are in their local area and opting to plant those over, say, your more traditional ones like oh. spot mahogany and... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, anybody can actually ring up the koala hospital or even go on their website and have a look. And there is all the listing of trees that grow in specific areas. Yeah, okay. And if you come to the hospital, now or certain times of year, we've got a 25,000 tree giveaway. Uh, so people right. can plant on their property. And we do get a lot of people who've got a lot of property come out and probably even grab 40, 50, 60 yeah. uh, trees of different species and they go out and plant them. Do you be able to explain what PAP is and why it's important for developing koalas? Yeah, okay, <coughs> PAP, which is, is a eucalyptus leaf in a different form. Normally, koalas have pellet, pelleted uh, feces and they spent 200 or so a day. But this becomes like a stucco, like really, like a runny Play-Doh, okay? So when that happens, the little joey will start popping its head out of the pouch and go to the cloaca and start eating this runny, mucky stucco of poo. That's basically what it is. So it takes about 10 days of milk and pap, milk and pap, to start coating the digestive system and once they've had enough, and mum's really, really clever, she starts showing them or handing them leaf the very young tips. So they don't go into the real big leaf first, smaller leaf. So basically when they're on mum's back which is, and they're about eight months, they are fully on leaf. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's how they do that. But in home care, how do you do it if you've got a human that's, that's, that's rearing a, a joey? Mm. Well, in that case, you need to come into the, into the hospital and collect the scats from a very healthy koala, um, which hasn't had chlamydia, hasn't had anything like that. Uh, and then we basically mortar and pestle and use a, a milk substitute like Biolac or Divetilac, mix that in with it and feed it that way for about 10, 12 days and do it like that and then start offering it leaf. Yeah. We do exactly the same sort of uh, same sort of thing.